What's up YouTube, IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today we're looking at the beefy miracle, Fedora 17. And we all have been a fan of the rather humorous name and I think finally Fedora has straightened out its identity crisis as being a fun loving distribution that is not afraid to do stuff that yeah, may, maybe other distributions are. Uh, for example, shipping latest cutting edge software might not necessarily be their thing, but they're definitely pointing a little bit that way. They're not quite for the end user, they're not quite for the developer, they're just for the person that loves Linux and loves to tinker around with their system. And uh, and I think they've actually done quite a nice release here under, under that premise. Uh, their release wiki is very humorous and if you've got the time to read it, I'll throw some links down below because uh, they, do, they do word it quite nicely going along with the whole hot dog theme. Uh, but here we are with the GNOME shell version of Fedora 17. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to have a look at the KDE version. I am planning on looking at Corora 17, the offshoot of Fedora. It's kind of like what Linux Mint is to Ubuntu. Uh, as uh, Corora to Fedora. So uh, I will be looking at the KDE version of that distribution, but let me know if you want me to have a look at the vanilla uh, Fedora 17 uh, install. So by default, we get GNOME 3.4 desktop. So of course you get GNOME shell with all of its uh, big chunky button gloriness. And uh, you know, people, have, uh, people are gonna be a fan of this or they're not going to be a fan of it. And uh, you know, it's really GNOME, GNOME shell is what we're stuck with now, so we might as well get used to it. And we've got, of course, we've got the categorizations on the side. We've got big, colorful, juicy icons here that do actually look quite nice this time around. I remember I had a few comments about some ugly icons in previous releases of Fedora, but all of them are quite, uh, they scale up quite nicely, so they do look quite, uh, they do look quite big and juicy despite the large, uh, the large size of them. And uh, of course, GNOME 3.4 brings a few improvements to the table along with their contacts application. So you can see here that I can sync a online account such as my Google account or use a local address book. And this is great to see that they've included uh, that GNOME ha are now using a contacts app. Apple has had this kind of application for quite some time, and uh, and to their and to their credit, GNOME has taken the initiative and created a contacts app for uh, for your contacts, and they've already included the online synchronization tool there, so that you can access those applica uh, those contacts wherever you are. Uh, and then also, of course, we do have the other GNOME tools like the GNOME Documents Viewer, which you can see here on the sidebar when I launch that. Again, it prompts you to have a look at using an online account. And you can see here I don't have anything there under new and recent because, duh, I've only just installed this. And you can see here that I've got some options here to view it as a grid or a list and about documents. And we can see that the, that the version revs that they're doing on these uh, on these GNOME apps is getting better and better every release. Moving along to the default applications, of course you have Firefox for your internet browser, you've got Rhythmbox for your music player, and you've really just got a basic selection of GNOME apps here. We've got the Shotwell Photo Manager there, and I'll be interested to see what version this is sitting at. We haven't really seen too much from Shotwell in, in recent times, but it never hurts to have a look. And we're sitting at 12.2, very good, which is the same as Ubuntu 12.04. And of course they do actually have the GIMP 2.8 uh, in the default repositories for Fedora, so plus one there for them. And of course they still have the same ad remove software uh, that they've had for centuries now. And uh, you guys know my comments on this and that uh, I would like to see this updated into a more user-friendly tool. But having said that, um, you know, it works. And for those who know what they're doing, they're probably going to be using the command line anyway, which is much, much quicker. And, uh, and that's what I prefer to use, the, uh, the sudo yum install, etc, etc. But having said that, the package manager this release around is quite a bit peppier than the last uh, than the last release. And I think that just has to do with some improvements from yum on the back end. So that's good to see. And, uh, and I'd have to say the package management with Fedora 17 is very speedy indeed. Uh, it doesn't take very long at all. And the mirrors are also uh, very peppy. The default repositories for Fedora are very peppy. And of course, all you need to do to enable all of your uh, non-open source software is just simply uh, install and enable the RPM Fusion repositories. So you can Google those and find out how to install them. It's only a few commands away. Uh, and then of course, if you don't want to, if you don't want to have, if you don't want to do all that work manually, then there are plenty of tools out there that can do it for you. So Google is your best friend, ladies and gentlemen. 
But once I think you you tweak out Fedora to the way you like it, it could be quite a nice system because it has been very stable in my experience. Gnome Shell is performing it is uh, is behaving itself very very nicely indeed, and uh, and it all seems to be flowing uh, quite well together. The integration with the uh, GNOME apps and the GNOME desktop is getting better and better and uh, there's really not much else to say about Fedora 17. The boot time is insanely fast and we'll just have a quick look here at the system monitor to find out how much resources this is using. It's using about 200, it's using almost 300 megs of RAM uh, out of the 3 gig that I've given it. So it's it's not too bad, it's it's fairly light on the resources considering that uh, we're not, we don't have many libraries loaded here. Of course if you were to load up Firefox with uh, with a few tabs and flash etc that would that would spike quite quickly but you do have evolution there for your email and uh, email and calendar and of course it's basically very vanilla gnome and you build whatever you want on top of that so it, it's a good base of a distribution so my final thoughts on Fedora 17 and I'm only going to make this a quick review simply because I've been here before and it looks very familiar uh, is that it's a very fast and stable base uh, with this with this release I definitely feel like they have gone leaps and bounds uh, as far as stability and also for performance wise uh, this distribution is, is is hitting the ball out of the ballpark so that's great to see they've made some very nice imp improvements obviously to their server and cloud capabilities as well which will ident uh, which will eventually find their way into the red hat uh, distribution for the uh, for the commercial side of things but on the user side of things, we, we do have GNOME 3.4, which is nice, and of course we have KDE 4.8. The user's obviously going to enjoy those desktop environments in their natural state, not uh, with any customization done to them at all. And, uh, and really, that's all there is to it. Fedora, of course, has a vast developer community behind it, so you're going to get lots of support from forums and, th and things of that nature. So this is definitely a, it's definitely a, pos a step in a positive direction, uh, especially considering how lackluster the Fedora 16 release was. Uh, so it's great to see that Fedora is, uh, has found a good vision and direction for itself and, uh, and let's hope it stays that way as a, as a distribution that provides a great base for the Linux enthusiast and just providing a quality open source operating system for people to utilize in whichever way they see fit. Of course, let me know in the comments below of what you think of Fedora 17, if you've given it a go. And if you haven't, then let me know why you will or why you won't. Uh, also, feel free to subscribe and like this video if you like this kind of content. And I shall be back again with another app review by the end of this week. And we're also going to be having a look at Solus OS, which I recommended on my Google Plus a few days ago, uh, which is going to be a uh, which is a stable Debian uh, operating system that has a few tweaks on it and it's been a very interesting operating system and I've had a few people recommend it. So look forward to that and I shall see you in the very near future. Peace out ladies and gentlemen.